Hello viewers, you're welcome to this week's episode of the Excellent Christian. If you've been following us, um, you will know that the Excellent Christian is a program that gives you the opportunity to pick the brains of some truly excellent people, to know what makes them tick, to know what has brought them and helped them to where they've got into. We believe that through these interactive sections, you'll pick up a few lessons that will benefit you on your own individual journey into excellence. My name is Tolu Hastrop. Excellent Christian. Um, viewers at home, you're welcome to the program. I am Olua Bumi, Olua Shon Samuel. Um, you're welcome to this special edition of the Excellent Christian, um, where we'll be featuring Mrs. Folonsho Alakija, um, who, by the grace of God, is the vice chairman of the Fafa Oil Limited and also the founder of the Rose of Sharon Foundation and the Rose of Sharon Bureau Ministry International. I have no doubt in my mind that um, as you listen to our testimony, you would have a refreshing time. Please sit tight and um, have a wonderful time listening to our testimony. God bless you. You're welcome to the program. I grew up in a polygamous family, a family of uh, 52 children, well, to start off with, and eight wives from a Muslim background. We are now 45, unfortunately, so we've lost some. Um, many of my father's uh, wives are dead. I think they're only two alive now. They're alive now. My father is dead, my, and my mother is dead, so I'm an orphan. Mm -hmm. We all loved one another. The children, most especially, the wives used to, you know, squabble, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. And, uh, there came a time when I was seven years old that uh, myself and the half-sister of mine were, were sent abroad to come study. But uh, basically, um, we, I come from a family of traders, mm -hmm. especially textile trading. My dad later moved into um, stockfish trading. Um, he was a, an importer. Well, on a wholesaler of uh, textiles and stockfish. Um, he sold to some of his wives, and um, it was from the textile trade that uh, I was able to cut my teeth mm -hmm. in um, learning about fabrics, textures, colors, um, designing uh, of fabrics, and uh, learning about dyes and, uh, you know, how colors work together, and uh, learning about merchandising. Because uh, each time that we came back from boarding house, my mom used to um, make sure that uh, all her children went to her store uh, to, to, to help out, especially the, the two girls. Uh, the guys came and go as they pleased. But that was where I was able to get my practical training which uh, came to good use later on in life when I later became a fashion designer. I, it wasn't in, in my heart to study the secretary, sec, secretary administration. What was in my heart originally was law. Mm -hmm. law. Uh, I loved watching court cases on TV. Uh, I still do. Uh, and I ended up marrying a lawyer. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be for me to become a lawyer myself. Because my father stepped into that when he asked me what I wanted to be. Um, and I told him, he said, no, 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 no. Uh, you don't need that. Um, lawyers these days, he was referring to those days, uh, don't have... Uh, many briefs on their hands mm -hmm. that in fact they go knocking on doors like that go, 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 Jenny, go down. Yes. <laughs> do you have any case for us so that we can handle for you basically but he was always a very humorous jovial person but um he wasn't joking he didn't want to put his girls through university education because he felt so that uh, it wasn't worth investing in the female child he preferred to invest in the, the male children because those are the ones that would carry on uh, the extension of his name um, uh, you know, to the generations to come. 
um, thought that, oh gosh, when girls get married, of course, <laughs> that's the end of, you know, how far his name gets to. Uh, so it was at the, that, with that at the, you know, background of his mind, uh, he turned down my proposal and he said, no, 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 why don't you go back to England and study the, the secretarial course? So I did. Uh, but later on in life, I found out that uh, God was actually using him mm. to chart the course of my destiny. So I give glory to God. Uh, I did study the secretarial course. I came back and um, I, I started work as, a, as an executive secretary. Carried on working as a, as, as a you know a, a, you know as a secretary um, for so many uh, bosses. Uh, I left uh, my first boss, uh, the former owner of uh, Ife, uh, who is now late. After a year and a half, I joined uh, a new bank that was setting up that time, International Merchant Bank uh, of Nigeria. Uh, um, it wasn't called International. It was called in. Um, First National Bank of Chicago, which after the Indianization decree changed its name to International Merchant Bank of Nigeria. Uh, I worked for you know, various entities, and uh, later on I was uh, promoted to head the corporate affairs department. Uh, I did that successfully. I uh, well, later was promoted to um, banking, uh, so I did an in-house course. Uh, I carried on working as a Banker, so to say, uh, I was put in the treasury department. I loved it because mm -hmm. I'm just a natural trader. Um, I, I made a lot of money for the bank. Uh, but uh, along the line, I began to get uh, dissatisfied with what I was doing because um, others who were being hired were brought in over me, so to speak, in the sense that uh, they would look at it. Uh, academic credentials mm. and put them above me and I felt that that was unfair okay. considering all I had put into the bank yes. and how much I had oh, and how much I had achieved for the bank I felt that I was uh, 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 being used and not uh, properly compensated for so I decided to leave the bank I believe that it was part of the Lord's doing the bank didn't want to accept my resignation but I had made up my mind that I wanted to, to leave. So I, I, I did leave, but um, just before I left, the MD of the, the bank at that time, I think I was something like 34, I think, I, the MD of the bank uh, asked me what I was going to be doing when I'm 40. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to study fashion design in England, and I came back and I set up my own business mm -hmm. in 1986. Uh, I called it uh, Supreme Stitches. Uh, Supreme Stitches quickly became a household name because within three weeks of my launching my label, I actually had entered into a fashion competition uh, and I won the competition. And it was a national competition and it was a highly coveted, uh, coveted so one for that matter. So it was like all roads lead to Supreme Stitches. So I, you know, I, I, kept, I, I loved what I was doing um, because um, I found that. God had given me a talent mm -hmm. as, far as, as far as passion was concerned and all those things that I learned while I was growing up with my mom and I was able to um, uh, use them to build my business and also all the things that I had learned and picked up and uh, you know actually experienced and uh, worked on and worked with while I was in the bank mm -hmm. uh, I put it in to run my own business all my administrative skills so it helped me to build my company so um, I uh, became, well, famous. I won't say rich. I wish I was rich as a result. But uh, I was comfortable. I was satisfied with what I was doing. Um, I was being given recognition here and there. I was put in the papers for a whole year. Every, every time, um, you know, I, I went on a courtesy visit. I, I was put in the papers by daily times because they were the ones that actually organized that competition, so they advertised me, mm -hmm. and uh, that brought me into the limelight. Okay. And uh, having been brought into the limelight, that also brought me a lot more customers mm -hmm. than maybe I would have had 
uh, starting off. So I had a rapid um, acceleration into the public eye. And uh, I had clients from all walks of life. And I was thoroughly enjoying what I was doing. After the, the fashion aspect of my life, um, God told me at a point that he was actually done with that mm. area of my life mm. and that he wanted me to move on. Uh, but I was holding on to it. I was holding on because I love fashion. Uh, I was holding on to it. I didn't want to let go. However, you know, God does his things in his own way mm. and his ways are not our ways according to the scriptures. Uh, I found that um, business was not as good as it used to be. Mm. Things were dwindling. And I was asking God, why, 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 why? I even had a fashion show where I just released 100 brand new uh, um, styles and designs. And uh, I found that the event was on uh, over the weekend. Monday morning, usually, I mean, I had the place swarming with uh, uh, the oh, clients yeah. and you know, people placing orders, nothing. The wow. door was tightly closed. Okay. And I was wondering and I was asking questions. And uh, God was just not, uh, you know, uh, coming forth. And I knew that there was a, a spiritual problem. And I started going to, 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 to you know, ask friends. And uh, people would talk about Jesus. Oh, I've been on their lips. I wasn't paying much attention. Uh, and then I decided to move my line of business to something that would give me more time to be able to do other things. Uh, so I went into um, uh, monogramming. Okay. And after monogramming, people started asking for other things uh, related to screen printing, uh, uh, souvenirs and all of that. I started going to China to bring in souvenirs as well. So I was doing all of that under uh, you know, one, one um, umbrella of my business that had now changed from it's Supreme so Stitches, that had changed from Supreme Stitches to uh, Rose of Sharon. Um, God had uh, told me through a man of God that I needed to change the name of the business to mm. Rose of Sharon, um, uh, you know, fashion. And I didn't do that for a whole year until I received it myself. Mm. And when I did receive it, I, I, I did just that. So that then later changed to uh, Rose of Sharon Prints and Promotions because it was no longer the fashion part that I was doing anymore. Mm. So I needed to choose a name that would reflect exactly mm. what I was doing at that time. So I was doing all of that. And one thing always gets to the other. <laughs> And then uh, people started asking for uh, backdrops, roll-ups, roll-up banners and all of that. Yes, trust me into the full printing business. <laughs> so, um, I, 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 I attended an exhibition, ordered machines, started that, and that's how I started the um, uh, Rose of Sharon. That's how I started digital reality prints. The whole talk to your business is, is, is such that you need to be there full time. Mm. And you need to monitor everything from start to finish. But with all those other things that I started getting myself into, I didn't need to be there full time overseeing everything so that I could have more time for other things. So um, I hired printers, I hired uh, um, all, all the uh, technical people that would be able to, uh, you know, I kept on being the businesswoman <laughs> that I was because it's just, Part and parcel of this me is just in my, <laughs> just in my, my blood because I come from a background of businessmen, mm -hmm. a businessman and businessman. You are great, yes, you are. Worship with us at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Lagos Province 3, Victory House, 24 Road, First Act Town, Lagos. Every first Monday to Wednesday of the month is our prayer mountain by 6 pm. Ministry is the provincial pastor, Pastor Austin Okaiwe, and other anointed ministers of God. Lift up your hands and say, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, I deduct sleep from the eyes of every Pharaoh. 
pursuing my destiny in the name of Jesus. Every Thursday is our anointed service with Pastor JT Kalajai, time 8 a.m. They want to disgrace you. That table, go we turn it around. And every first Sunday of the month is our Thanksgiving service by 8 a.m. Come on, yeah, somebody say baba, somebody say baba, somebody say baba, somebody say baba. Come, worship with us and have a refreshing time with Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Everything written about you is great. Do you love to travel? Then, plan and book your perfect trip with expert advice, travel tips and destination information on NigerTravel.com. NigerTravel.com is the online booking system of Victory Travels and Tours owned by the Redeemed Christian Church of God which enables our CCG members worldwide to enjoy incredible discounted rates when booking flights, hotels and cars from the comfort of their homes whenever they are going on vacation or on a spiritual voyage. With Niger Travel, you get to enjoy amazing deals when visiting historical sites for your religious tours in places like Israel, Turkey, Malta, or a tour to the seven churches mentioned in the Book of Revelation. There are also amazing discounts for tourist embarking on business, medical tour, educational tour, and recreational tour. Newlyweds can also have an experience of a lifetime when you plan your honeymoon with NigerTravel.com. Don't just book the first flight you come across, surprise your beloved with an unforgettable romantic getaway to one of the great European capital cities. Experience the finest that Paris, Rome, Madrid and Athens have to offer. Adorn your memories with hot cuisine, signature hotels, distinct cultures and breathtaking wonders found in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, South Africa, Kenya, The Gambia, Zanzibar and continental Europe. With Niger Travel, you enjoy the benefits of visa advisory, service, airport protocol, travel insurance, and much more. Travel to the destination of your choice and pay later with Sky Travel Finance. Any destination, any airline. Visit NigerTravel.com to enjoy an all-inclusive and budget-friendly breathtaking holiday destinations worldwide. NigerTravel.com. Travel with ease. Hello, my name is Kemi. I'm a 300 level student of the Mars University. Do you know I still do not know the particular reason why I chose this university? I remember when I was in SST, like most of you, I had dreams of what my university should be like. I had wanted to school abroad for standard consideration, but I was told I could get the same here. I wanted my university to be a citadel of education with amiable faculties, a friendly environment with adequate facilities for both academic and social needs and success-friendly teachers to their tuition. Guess what I met here? This is our well-stocked library. Books, journals, on a wide range of subjects. Studying this array of updated materials in such a congenial environment like this sure does some good to assimilation. It is one thing to have facilities and another to have faculties who are result-oriented. It was in this laboratory, a renowned science professor and scholars, Kotil Ebola. Yes, say I said so. We are leading research institution. Ours can easily pass for a five-star cafeteria. Good meals prepared and served with cautious hands here. Nourish our minds. This is my room. It is in suite. We are only two. I think we have the best in-campus student accommodation in Nigeria. Hail and happy. This is where I come from, medical rejuvenation. We engage in sporting activities, and our Department of Theatre and Film Studies will stop at nothing to provide us with quality performances. Lastly, I needed a place where I could receive spiritual guidance and counseling. As a Christian, where else can I find that other than the university founded by the Redeemer himself? Why not come join me here at the Redeemer's University for an experience of a lifetime? I remember that um, I bumped into a friend of mine on board uh, an aircraft one day, and uh, she had said to me that uh, when we get back to Nigeria, there's something I want to send to you if 
I still need to send it to you. I've already sent it to somebody, but uh, I'll let you know. Okay, we got back to Nigeria and uh, she did get back to me and she said, uh, please, there is a, an American company that would like to buy crude. Um, I wonder whether you might be able to uh, try and get them, uh, try and help them to get buy crude. And I said, okay, I'll try. And, you know, I went to visit a friend of mine and uh, uh, got, an, uh, got a, an appointment to see the Minister for Petroleum. And uh, the Minister for Petroleum actually, uh, for Petroleum actually discouraged me. Mm. Um, he said that there wasn't much uh, to, uh, in terms of profit in that area. He said, uh, but uh, the company that I'm representing, would they want to invest in Nigeria? Um, I said, I'll go back and find out whether they want to, you know, they want to invest in Nigeria. He said, uh, because that they, they really want to discourage multinationals from coming to cut away the wealth of the nation. Uh, so if they want to invest in Nigeria, then they can begin to talk to them. But otherwise, he would not advise that, uh, you know, they come and carry on lifting our food mm -hmm. and that there is so much profit in it anyway. So I took the, the report back and uh, my friend said, okay, she'll find out. She did find out. They said, no, they weren't interested. So it was bye-bye. And then I thought that since I thought not it in the door, mm -hmm. that why should I get that door closed? So I decided to go and visit a few people in MNPC to go and find out what I could possibly ask for. In terms of contracts, I was just looking for a small contract. I was happy with doing what I was doing with my fashion business. Um, but it doesn't matter if you make a little extra here and there, you know. So uh, I was told, why didn't you go and ask for transport uh, facilities, you know, offer transport, transport facilities? And I did go back and said, uh, ah, transport facilities, what do you want to do with that? Uh, by the time we connect all the pipelines, uh, we're going to do away with the, those uh, trucks and all of that. You're going to, not going to need it. Okay. Hmm. Then I went back again. Uh, I went back and I offered catering services uh, because on the high seas there are ships and people have to eat. Mm -hmm. And I felt that, okay, if I can get that contract, I can get something you know, from that as well. So it was like, why don't you think of something more substantial? Okay, sir. I went back and then um, I went back and I offered something else, I can't remember right now. And it was like another slap in the face. I, it, ordinarily, someone else, mm, not being the kind of person that I am, <coughs> would have been discouraged and not bother. Because he then said, you know, we want to encourage Nigerians mm. to begin to explore and exploit our own resources in Nigeria. So why don't you look into exploration and production? I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I know. Don't call us, we'll call you. Uh, you know, when they tell you things like that, that you can't reach. Something you can't reach. So he was like, okay, my friend. So I left. And then I told my friend that this is what I heard. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't let her know that I was crying, I cried and cried and cried. My husband, you know, hated me and said, after all, we're not, uh, we are, you know, we are comfortable, we are not, uh, we're not down to so what's all this crying about and all of that. And then I sat down and I thought about it, that why would I want to give up? Hmm. Why don't I go and give it a try? Who are those? that are in that industry who do exploration. They didn't come from heaven. They came from the same earth. And I went and looking, looked into their backgrounds, and it was like, none of them, well, most of them, didn't have anything to do with the oil industry. Mm. You understand me? So I said, if they can do it, why can't I? So I decided that I was going to do my homework. So that's how I decided that I was not going to take no for an answer. Okay. I was going to do my homework. I was going to give it my all, everything that it takes. I looked for technical partners. Uh, I found. I got all my papers together. Mm -hmm. I put in uh, 
my application. But <laughs> that was just the beginning. I wrote three applications. And from, from start to finish, it took three years to eventually be able to get the oil license. But in between trying to get that oil license, huh, I found Jesus. Mm. Because it got to a point where other people would have given up. That, you know what, it's not worth it. But I said to myself, what am I going to lose? All I can do is to carry on trying. Worst case scenario, mm -hmm. they'll say no. <laughs> they'll say no. But supposing it happens, mm. then all the efforts that I've made won't be in vain. So I carried on at it. Uh, all ministers came mm. and went. On one occasion, after about two years, I got a reply saying, your application is receiving attention. I <laughs> cried my eyes years. out. After two years, <laughs> I cried my eyes out again. In between all of that, I was, I, 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 I decided that I needed to go and find God. Mm. I started having a hunger for God. All along, I was from a Muslim background, not going to church, not um, not uh, a religious uh, Muslim. I wasn't a practicing uh, Muslim. You know, come Sundays, I would go to the market. My husband would uh, be in the garden, and the children would be watching TV. So that's how we lived our lives until I decided that I wanted to come find God. And I had this yearning, and the yearning was going and was going. I picked up the Bible. I started reading it. I, at one time, I got to the portion that talked about entering into covenant with God and, and, and giving one's life to Christ. I gave my life to Christ. I don't remember the dates, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave my life to Christ. I entered into that covenant with him. And I said, if he would bless me, that I would work for him all the days of my life. Well, that's the excellent question for this week. Today was fantastic, but we are totally out of time. So we'll continue this particular interview, same time, same station, next episode. And I believe that you'll be blessed even as you join us. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week for the concluding episode. God bless you. Have a nice week ahead. I'm Uluwa Bumi Show.